Hi and welcome to the Zonjiland show where everybody is upside down. Yeah? Yes. Yes? yes. Good. Yeah. That was the fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is upside down in Zonjiland. The last time I saw Ulrich was like one year ago. We did an interview in Oslo. And so many things have changed since then. Oh my god. So yeah. You were like this routine guy in Oslo. I still am, yes. You mm -hmm. still are. Okay, oh, yeah. never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but tell us, like, what happened since we saw you last time? Yeah, um, I, Tom and I were doing uh, workshops. We started, first we did one uh, last summer in London uh, and it was really fun and we got good feedback. So we decided, hey, let's do a tour. Let's go to America. <laughs> so uh, in February and no, it's actually March. We went uh, to a, a US tour where we traveled through the whole thing and had workshops in the bigger cities. And I expected to be stressed out and stuff since I'm a quiet introvert in Norwegian. Uh, who does the same thing every day and like it. <laughs> but it turned out that I loved it. I really liked being uh, in a, a community with people doing handstands. Everything was centered around hand balance all day long. Uh, the workshops were so much fun. Got to meet so many people. It was exhausting, but I really loved it. So I, I was surprised because I didn't expect me to like it. So, so when I got home, it was kind of uh, anticlimactic because everything was like, wow, same routines again. Hmm. Um, so I got bored. And one day I woke up thinking, hey, I'm too young to be bored. So I need to do something exciting. So I decided to quit my job, sell everything I own, and move to Vienna. Yeah, that's what's happening. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Are you excited? Yep, I'm super excited to see how this handstand coaching life will uh, develop. So Ulrich is actually going to move into our apartment because you maybe already saw it on Instagram. We announced then we are going to California, Ivo and I, mm -hmm. and so we have this spare apartment and Ulrich is going to take it. So you are going to offer coaching here? Yes, I'm going to do one-on-one and uh, smaller classes, groups, and uh, it's going to be kind of my base and I'll be doing workshops and stuff uh, everywhere. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm happy about it. Yeah. What happened to your own handstand training during this year? Did yeah. you have any progress? Uh, I have a lot of progress, which is expected since I'm spending so much time and I'm getting more um, knowledge, obviously. Um, so now I feel confident enough to do some performances hmm. because I think I'm uh, handstand-wise good enough for people to view it without thinking that it looks like trash. <laughs> I think you've been there for a long time though. Ah, uh, no. Oh, Just maybe. maybe your own security? I, I don't know, but uh, the thing is that I, I, I'm not secure on stage. I've always had stage mm. fright since I was uh, really small. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's still something you want to do? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Tell us uh, about it. Because like, uh -huh. I think a lot of people have stage fright, mm. but secretly maybe would like it, yeah. but maybe they think it's too late or too old. I think it's the same fear as with everything else that's new and scary. Uh, it's scary because you haven't done much of it, mm. but then it gives a so big rush and then it's so worth it. Cool. So I've been on stage like three times now and every time it's, it's a huge thing. I need to prepare a lot and I get so uh, scared, excited, adrenaline, yeah. everything. And then after it's done, it's like, wow. That was insane. Cool. Was so fun. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, and since I've been training so much, spending so much time on developing it, I feel like I'm ready to kind of show it to people mm. uh, more than adding cute music to Instagram and make some jokes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I want to do more of it. Cool. Mm. How is handstanding for you on stage? This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adrenaline. It's super scary. Um, so how does it affect your balance? Shaking a lot. I can barely do the basics. Oh wow. Mm. Like so it's super scary arm for, for me. Yeah, this turn um, is my arms is shaking. 
Wow. It'll, it depends on the stage though. Now I've been to a bit uh, different scenarios. Um, I was on Norway's Got Talent. Yeah. That's the scariest thing I've done this far. Really? Because it was a lot of TV crews. There was uh, public uh, judges. It was like known and stuff. And uh, there was so many crew people working around. It was planned um, a lot many weeks uh, ahead. Uh, and it was so professional. Yeah. And I know that it would be sent on national t- television. And the lights on stage, it was so grand. So like, when just doing a normal press and stuff, everything was shaking. Totally, oh, and I was God. like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck it up. Can <laughs> you tell us how it went? No. For it's... you? Like how it went for you? Okay, it was very exciting. I loved it. Okay. I, but I'm, I, I can't say anything. You can't say more? Yeah, I'm not allowed. And when are we gonna know how, how it was? Late in October. Yeah. That's a long time. It is. It's May now. Mm. Mm. But okay, so just stay tuned. <laughs> we will find out eventually. Yep. Uh, so what's the level of the people that you usually teach? Uh, everything. From people who have never touched the floor with their hands before, mm-hmm. to people who are wanting to work on one arm handstand. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. you get a big range in a yes. lot of experience. Yes, and that's very exciting because uh, need to like turn on a different kind of coaching brain to different kind of people. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between a beginner and a more advanced? Um, uh, with advanced people, they've been through a lot already. But there's different stereotypes there as well. Some mm-hmm. people uh, want to only work the fun things maybe. And they want to do stuff that they're not ready to do. And mm-hmm. I need to tell them need to do more of this, more of that, and not doing this that much. Mm. And then we have the other type who will stick to the basics too long and not move through the basics, like mm. doing Excel because they feel insecure about it. Mm. So you need to kind of figure out what kind of person we have to deal with there. Mm. Um, for the beginners, it's just teaching them the basics, the, the, getting the understanding of the principle behind handstands. Mm and make them do the right things, make them understand so they can correct themselves. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. How would you describe the principles of handstand? Um, center of mass or base of support. That is the principle of being able to balance something. Um, for handstands, it's an understanding of the this. So pulling this in while pushing this up. Uh, yeah, and that sounds easy when you're standing on your feet or sitting on a chair, but doing it upside down for a person who's never been on their hands before is getting complicated. But that's the basic line, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people are interested in how to enter into handstands and like how to kick up. Yeah. How would you teach somebody? Uh, first, I see that a lot of people um, kind of have a misconception about kickups. They think um, they see uh, see people do handstands and they see people kick up into a handstand. And from that, if they don't have an understanding, they believe that training to get to that point just is kicking up, kicking up mm-hmm. until you're staying there. So mm-hmm. first, understand that that's not the process of it. The process of it is learning alignment, learning a shape that's yeah. stable to balance on, and also learn to balance in the shape, and then yeah. separately learn on how to efficiently enter that uh, balanced shape. Mm. So uh, that's kind of three-parted. That's the entrance, that's the shape or a, uh, something that's sustainable to balance in, which happens to be straight for beginners. Um, and then there's the what was that? That was entry, shape, balance. The actual balance. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when you have practice balance from a wolf or with a spotter, then you can also work on kick up as uh, as one out of three aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, so not just kick and kick and kick and fall and fall and fall. Yeah. But actually work on the shape and, and balance as well. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but. <clears throat> Before I started coaching with you, mm-hmm. that was basically what I did. Okay, yeah. 
for a very long time. Mm. Like, I don't know, more than a year, for mm. sure. And then you don't accumulate time in a handset. Yeah. So every time you try, you can maybe balance for a second or two, if you're lucky. Yeah. But over time, it won't. you will just gain a few seconds in a handset every day, and you don't learn anything from it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I have another interesting question for you. Uh, when is the right point to introduce shapes to the balance? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that the straight position, uh, it's, uh, it's a tall position, which makes it hard to balance in. Uh, with different like, uh, positions, like for example, tuck, it demands more strength, but you have a lower center of mass, mm -hmm. which makes it easier to balance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, learning to balance consistently in straight gives more value than, for example, doing it in splits. Mm -hmm. So, if you're strong in balance and straight, it's easier to transition to the straddle and to the other splits afterwards. Mm, okay. So, I would first focus on the straight and the tuck, and when both of those are kind of solid, then you can introduce other uh, shapes as well. I see a lot of people who, especially in the yoga community, where they want to balance in something like this or mm -hmm. bend some knees and stuff. Or, yeah. yeah, because it's super easy. It's super easy because the center of mass is so low, sure. but this doesn't carry over very well to this. Yeah. But this carry over to everything else, yeah. or, or, or at least until uh, shapes with lower center of mass. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, uh, first get control here and with the tuck, and then you can introduce different shape after. Mm -hmm. uh, and also you can be creative and stuff afterwards. Yeah. But don't skip the straight because you're not able to balance it straight and then you just need to step up your game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's also beneficial with time after straight and tuck is, uh, is tight to, to get an understanding of that the legs can do anything without it affecting uh, what's happening in your shoulders. So this should be super tight and you can move your legs around in different shapes. Mm. A good routine is uh, straight, straddle, diamond, tuck. Uh, diamond straddle straight because then you will get different um, kind of uh, strength Holds. demands from mm -hmm. your shoulders and it will test your ability to, to uh, turn that on and off yeah. uh, w w w with the tempo. Yeah. So for example going from diamond to tuck then you suddenly get an easy shape into a strength twice harder shape because your legs are getting out of your center of mass mm -hmm. and then you need to um, understand how to turn on that tuck strength when you need it and then also turn it off when you're going out again. Yeah. And then we're going to straddle which is easy but then you're going to a tall shape again after you've done that work and you're a bit tired so you need to focus a lot on getting straight again. Mm -hmm. So that's a good routine. Yeah. But uh, the thing is this needs to be tight and not to move. Yeah. What do you think are uh, mistakes that beginners make very often? Uh, I think the most common mistake is not understanding uh, enough. That they have kind of a, a really small understanding of what handstand is, uh, but they need to widen their uh, horizon of, of information about handstands. Mm -hmm. So they actually just need to learn more about it. So they get an understanding of why they're doing this, why they're doing that, mm. why this fell. Um, if that doesn't happen, uh, they usually train in a not very productive way. Mm. Which for super beginners is trying to kick, trying to kick, trying yeah. to kick. And then there's also understanding the, or not understanding, but learning the patience. Um, because um, most people are maybe attracted to Ansan because it looks sexy. Because, oh my god, you're doing a straight, you're balancing the mm. hands up. And then they're attracted to the, uh, the result, not maybe the process. Yeah. So it's a transition from getting attracted to the result and actually starting to like to work to get it. Yeah. Because it's so differently. Yeah. Mm. I agree 100%. That's a shock to a lot of people. Yeah. When people ask how much work it is, how many hours, how much time, blah, blah, blah people are like, oh. And, uh, because they don't necessarily take it serious from the start. 
Yeah. They think it's something that would be fun to be able to do. Mm -hmm. But when they realize that it's not a, a after practice quick fix, they just forget a bit about it. Or they're satisfied with taking a picture that's not in balance on a beach and then they can hashtag balance life <laughs> or something or always believe that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Actually, we have a, a whole episode about the subject oh, nice. of patience and commitment. Remember? Yeah. The one last year. So if you haven't watched the episode we did last year with uh, Ulrich, mm. you can watch that and there will be a lot of... <laughs> Knocking reality. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was a good one. Yeah, it turned out a bit dark, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, mm. I, I think it was very realistic. Cool. Um, I actually want to get back into the subject of performing with you. Okay, yeah. Just because it's in interesting for me personally. And I oh, also okay. had somebody ask about it. Mm. So I'm, I was just wondering how you come up with your acts. Okay, first of all, I want to say that I have a huge respect for performance and uh, I'm not one yet, but I'm just starting to uh, want to learn how to perform. Mm. So I don't claim to be a performer uh, yeah. because there are people going to school and really have a lot of focus on being a performer and, and I, I haven't done that yet. So I'm just playing around with some music and trying to make it look, look entertaining and also where I feel like I can kind of express something mm -hmm. that will possibly hit the person who sees it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but still, you have to create something and then you have to go on stage and do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how do you even come up with what you do um, on stage? Uh, I'm trying to see how, what scenario I'm going to perform in. For now, I've been doing two burlesque shows <laughs> <laughs> and then the Norway's Got Talent. And then yeah. a street workout show. Uh, for the burlesque show, it's it's you can be sleazy and just have a good time, be a bit strippy yeah. uh, and stuff like that, and that works fine. But uh, <laughs> on Norway's Got Talent, it's a family show, so you need to kind of make it a little bit less of that strip ah, feeling okay. a bit. Um, it has to be more professional or like yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah. So I'm trying to play with always play with the music, try to. Mm. Um, use some music that um, makes sense to me where I mm -hmm. feel something that I want to express um, and a music that I can move to which builds up to something that I um, so I can kind of um, keep the pace of the music mm. that's important to make a good act mm. or that's my con what I believe it is, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I'm thinking about it. Um, and start with something uh, easy uh, on two hands, not too difficult. And then the further you come into the act, the more advanced you will go. Mm. Um, and usually there's, in a handstand act, there's kind of three handstand parts. There's first something very easy, introducing handstands. And then there's a middle part where you move around something. And then there's uh, a third, a second part where there's more advanced stuff, mm -hmm. and then there's a third part which should be the most difficult and most impressive kind of trick. If you do a handstand, one on handstand, like super early on, everything else will get boring because mm -hmm. people have already seen the most impressive thing. They yeah. don't know the difference between a side bend, a flag, or a one on handstand. Mm -hmm. They say, Oh, uh, one arm and moving legs around, that's a one arm handstand. Yeah. And then when you do a flag later on, people will be like, oh yeah, cool, he's moving his leg around yeah. on one arm, but we've seen the one arm. Yeah. So it's kind of saving the best for last, so the people will keep their excitement. What is he going to do next? Yeah. Uh, are there certain people you admire or that you get inspiration from for performing? There's so many. There's so <laughs> extremely many. And uh, I think it's a bit hard to watch them because I, I can only do this much of what they are doing. Yeah. So I need to kind of just search and <clears throat> see that if I can find people who are technically on the same level as I am mm -hmm. and try to see what what I think is looking good that I could be able to perform mm -hmm. and kind of make my own expression with it. Expression can be like moving my hand in a special way as that hands and technically doesn't m matter, but just make it my own. Yeah. Uh, 
So there's no uh, specific person that I look at mm. for inspiration, but I'm trying to just see what other people are doing so I can see what works for me. Mm. Mm. Cool. That's pretty cool. Um, do you ever have like the problem that you don't know which movements to come up with? Or like that, you know, like writers have a writer's block? Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is so new to me, so I haven't made many acts yet. How many have you made? Uh, I've done uh, three different ones. Mm. Mm. And uh, it's like, I feel like a super amateur when I talk, talk about this, because <laughs> I am an amateur in this scene. So yeah, when I talk about act, interested. it's like yeah, music and then trying to fit the music. While the yeah. professionals are making acts, they're like getting clothes and gear and yeah. everything, which I don't yeah. have uh, knowledge about. So I'm just trying my best to do, um, make something that's worth mm -hmm. watching with a little base of information knowledge I have. But that's, I think... It's very humbling. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what I think is interesting because mm. You didn't go to circus school. Mm. You have no performing arts background whatsoever. Like you never had a dance class or mm. anything else that would be on a stage. No. And still here you are. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm good. Things. Everybody can create something, but you need to see how people react on it. I have mm. no idea if I suck on that yet. I will see that in time, <laughs> and I will also uh, try to learn as much as I can. Uh, get some uh, teacher to to uh, help mm. me understand a bit more about um, creating acts. Yeah. And doing not the hands-on technical things, but binding it together, move to the music, make things flow better. Yeah. Express myself better. Yeah. Mm. I just think. Or I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there who would like to do what you do if they had the courage, you know? I mean, it's mm -hmm. not only uh, going for the training and really putting in the work, mm. but also like taking the next step mm. and developing like you are. Mm. That's very rare, I think, that mm. somebody who has no background, mm. who was obese or overweight, changes into something that shines on stage that's just incredible oh, thanks i mean yeah mm. and it's different because you are because of your background mm. it's not like you have been working since you were a child and mm. you got the proper education of a circus school mm. and you learned how to uh, how do you say the dramaturgy of an act, mm. you know? Mm. It's not something that you really, that anybody really taught you. So, no. No. yeah, it's really, really interesting. Mm. So, um, do you make it up in your head and then try it out or how, how do you do it? Okay, um, I listen a lot to music and then uh, um, uh, I get an emotional attachment to a song which I'll maybe find that uh, if I'm in this mood, this music might fit. Uh, if I'm in another mood, that uh, music might fit. And then I kind of select the mood I want to create around the act. And I try to find music uh, who fits that expression or mood or feelings or whatever that I want mm. to express. And then I start to think about the movement vocabulary which I have. Mm -hmm. try to take the moves that I think people can relate to or find um, uh, that they can get the same kind of emotions that I feel uh, and make that work mm -hmm. and makes it fit to both the lyrics of the music and also the build up of the music. Mm -hmm. um, and then I try to make everything look good together based on that mm -hmm. and build it up so I'm just starting with the slow, easier stuff and go more and more advanced towards the end. Hopefully, and most of the music is built up that way as well. But it depends on the expression that I want. Mm. Uh, but right now I'm working on a, a performance where it's a bit kind of uh, dramatic, uh, emotional, and then I'm trying to get into that uh, expression. Okay. And vulnerable. Mm. Mm. 
Cool. I'm so looking forward to see what you bring in the future. I'm it excited be, to show it to you. Yeah, it will be really <laughs> interesting. So thank you so, so much for being on the show again. Thank you for being here in my future home. <laughs> yeah. Did we say that already? Yeah, it was nice that. to have you come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we still have to talk about the details here. Yeah. But yeah, I'm so happy that you will take it over. Yeah, me too. And, and hopefully potential. have a lot of students here. So if you are interested in handstands, in learning handstands, and you live in Vienna or close to Vienna, then please go to this man. I can highly recommend it. I have been coached by him myself for seven months and basically my whole base of what I learned I got from you so I'm very thankful for that too remember that the world is your playground so just go ahead and do whatever you love and I'll see you next Monday on the Sonji Land Show Squid. hi and welcome to the Sonji Land Show where every one is upside down <laughs> everybody <laughs> I fucked it up oh, okay once again hi and welcome to the Sonji Land Show where Everyone is upside down? Actually, it's everybody. Okay, one more time. Okay. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> uh, it's also too tired. Oh no. Fine. We're fine. Okay. Hi and welcome to the Sonji Land Show where. Everyone is upside down. It's everybody. Oh my fuck. Okay, one more time. Come on, come on. Hi and welcome to the Sonji Land Show where everybody is upside down. <laughs> I did it. It was a little bit. One more time? One more time. One more time. When I laugh, I cry. I hate it. Always. <laughs> okay.